here today in the Schmidt Gallery with artist David Gerbstadt um, talking about his show Choose Joy. Um, David, why did you do this? What is Choose Joy about? Choose Joy is primarily based on my stay in the hospital where I was in for almost two months after a really bad accident and I learned that we are loved, we matter, and what we do is important and that we should have more joy in our lives. So I decided to choose joy. How long did it take you to do this body of work? Most of all this was done in the last three years. How many uh, pieces did you have to choose from for this? Um, there was approximately 15 large sculptures. I created about 104 miniature sculptures for this show. Um, that range from about 4 sixteenths high up to about 9 inches. Those are the smaller ones. And then I did about two dozen paintings, 6,300 drawings, and... Um, you have 6,300 drawings here? Well, yes. There's a, there were about 50 up, and then they would rotate down every time they were sold. So there were a lot of drawings here. So you actually had 6,300 in the building, but not in the gallery. Is that what you're... Yeah, in the building, not nice. in the gallery, yes. Not so, all up at once, no. So what sort of things are the drawings about? They're all sorts of things, mostly of what I hear during the day, you know, bits in conversation, um, you know, uh, what I heard during the day and, and then while I watch my movies or, you know, um, positive affirmations like, be happy, choose joy, never give up, be kind, and, um, and silly things like, it's a zag attack. Um, I see that you're, you're sitting next to a large wooden creature. Uh, yes. Where do these come from? I, I make these mostly out of found wood. Um, his head is made out of a pallet. His neck is made out of a chair that I found in the trash trash day and I broke him up and the legs are hammers from a piano and that's why there's these extension pieces here. The body is made out of a pallet and his tail is made out of two hammers from a piano. So I use found and, and recycled you know, wood that I found in the trash and then the paint is house paint that most people just give to me or I find and I just paint them up. And a lot of them are in my front yard. So all Very there. cool. Um, I see there's a lot of uh, different uh, mantras that keep, keep getting repeated. Um, yeah. You are loved, uh, choose joy. Um, what, why do you keep repeating those mantras? Um, it's primarily um, drawing for me is every day and it's like a way of prayer and repetitive prayer. It's not like I don't go to church or I spin my be spin pair of beads. I draw. It's my form of meditation, and a lot of it is repetitive, of positive affirmations that I want to have in my life. Um, I'd rather focus on the good than focusing not on the, on the other stuff that we always hear the bad things. I'd rather focus on the good stuff, and um, so thing things that make me happy, like French toast. Everybody likes French toast, at least I like French toast, so I put French toast on the pain. <laughs>
So I, I guess I was told I, I was prolific, but I don't really consider myself prolific. But I, I guess I could call myself prolific now since I always draw. I think you're pretty prolific. Pretty prolific. Um, it, it, how do you determine whether you're going to draw or you're going to paint or you're going to make some sculpture? Um, Is there? I switch it up because it, it's just, you know, I got an idea, I'm drawing down in Watching a, movie, watching a movie a lot of times and um, then I go downstairs and I just go get something and then i like, wow, I get an idea and I have to paint for another hour or so. So I have paintings set up downstairs in the basement working down there and I have different stations throughout the house. So I have set up for some drawing. If I get tired of that, I can go over to painting and then I can go over to sculpture. So I do it all different mediums. Like just to not, just to mix it up. So do the paintings and the sculpture come from the drawings, or are they separate from each other? Not really. The drawings are, are more of just something I do without much thought, and I just keep drawing all day long. And sometimes the, a painting might come out of that, but you know, usually the, the painting is just separately entirely from the drawing. And I, I work as fast as I you know, pretty quickly and um, it just works itself out and the painting just usually comes out by itself. I'm just there putting the paint on the surface and it's just, it happens. I can't explain it half the time. When it's done, it's done and I'm just, sometimes I'm surprised what happens. And then the sculpture was a more of a cathartic process because it was really a struggle to actually understand how things can go together, like work from the 2D to all of a sudden working in 3D, and it was kind of a struggle at first, but because of how to put things together, I mean, I was familiar with joints and fasteners, but when you start putting like piano hammers and stuff like that together with skid and wood, it's just, it just got tricky for some reason particular reason and, and I wanted to make it look somewhat interesting but um, so they the, the objects the little critters they seem to just come out by themselves like sometimes the head just gets changed two or three times because it just doesn't look right and you know the body and the tail they don't match so I it does take a little bit of time they take a little bit more time than well, that would make sense that, yeah. that they would. I've seen some of your paintings that uh, have uh, found objects in them. Is Was that um, something that came about? I don't know that there's any in the gallery right now that are like that, but I've seen that in some of your other work. Yeah, um, I have screwed my studio shoes to the painting. I've screwed roller blades to them and several other things like spent paint brushes and stuff like that. Um, but I don't think anything in the show is not there's critters with golf clubs for their tail, or there's critters with, you know, different pieces, like the head over the, on this one has, their head is um, a video cassette case and the white sprockets or his eyes. So things like that come about more in the sculpture, but not so much in the painting nowadays. So. Um, where do you get uh, your inspiration um, now from some of the uh, the new work? The new work, pretty much a lot of the drawings come out from you know, what I hear during the day. Um, conversations overheard or eavesdropped or uh, great quotes during the day and um, sometimes people read them and ask me later what they meant and I, sometimes I know not what to answer because I don't know what they mean because they're sometimes so obscure. But um, 
Sometimes it's usually just something I hear, like through a, a film or a, the music or everyday conversations, and that's where it usually comes from. But in the paintings, it's a constant, it's a repetition right for right now of the mantras that I've been doing to bring some happiness into my life. Do you see um, this going in a different direction? Any, or is that a gradual process, or is that something you decide? How, how does that happen? The from where I am now, from what I was three years before this, is a huge change, and it, the process is very it's gradual. And sometimes I can see it, and sometimes it just happens. It usually happens on its own, and I'm not aware of it until further down the road and I see it actually happening. Um, there's actually some work in this show that it's that those changes have were subtle but you know um, because those works were older um, you know within three years there's even subtle more changes so it happens on its own and sometimes I like to I try to force it and it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> as I was pointed out before and um, so I just let it happen. So it's an organic process. It just yeah. little bit by little yeah, bit. Little you bit. Know. Things are added. Sometimes you know, like uh, there's like the dots on the on the on the sculpture. Those are smaller, much smaller, and repetitive on the paintings. So I added the like from the painting. I took it to the sculpture. A little dot for his eye. And, sculpture and stripes on his neck. Those are similar things that would have been in the painting, but much smaller and a lot more of it. So the, the, the paintings seem to get a lot more detail and a lot more um, intense and like more involved. So yeah, it's, it's, when I get really into it, it takes a long time and the brushes get smaller and smaller. So it's quite fun. It seems like you have fun. Yeah, I have a fun time of the day, you know, hanging out with my at my house, and it's just fun. I like to have, I like to do it because it, it's fun and it keeps me happy. Uh, do you, you want to talk a little bit about? I know that you have a, a dog, Noel, that also keeps you happy. Yeah, she's a little bouncy, three-legged dog. She's she sleeps a lot during the day. I think she's part cat, really. She goes on a five minute walk, and that's you know, a 10 minute walk, and then she stops, lies down, and wants to go home. Um, so she keeps me occupied, and you know, if I'm not having a good day, she'll come over and lick my face. And, you know, if I'm lying down taking another nap for the day, she'll come over and lick my face and say, it's time to get up and go to work. And what's work for me is, you know, get messy and play and make more art. So uh, she's, she's my, um, my monitor to keep me going sometimes. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, maybe I didn't ask the right questions. No, I would just like to thank Goggle Works and Reading for having me at the Schmidt Gallery and having this wonderful space um, to be in the Schmidt Gallery. And um, it was a great opportunity. I'm glad I was here. And uh, I met a lot of new artists who work here and who have space here. And, um, studios and um, it's a great place and um, I will probably be back but uh, yeah. Well we hope you will be. We've enjoyed yeah. having you so much. You've added a lot of life, a lot of joy to uh, the experience that everyone here at Goggle Works and has. The, yeah, the Goggle Works is a great place. It's got a lot of great classes and workshops so it's a great place to check out. So. Well thank you very much yeah. David.